Now, before any of you kick off, I absolutely love Mac OS. Yes, I do. I have an iPhone. I have a Mac mini here, but I also love Windows because I use Windows at work. And in an ideal world, I would love to be using Linux. Ideally, it's something like Arch Linux because it is getting better. There's just a few limitations for me to be able to implement Arch Linux every single day. But anyway, with that said, let me show you how I would set up my Mac OS from scratch because recently I've been playing around with the new beta of 26 Tahoe. I think it's the beta 3 and it essentially ruined my Mac. I couldn't install any apps. I couldn't run any apps even though the apps were there. And anyway, long story, but I've now gone ahead and completely wiped my Mac and let me set it up from scratch. Scratch. Now I want to set it up with a home lab in mind because there are many things that I do on my Mac to manage control my home lab as well as obviously remote into other PCs and just in general how I make managing my home lab easier. Now the first thing I do with any new computer that I'm going to be permanently using at home is giving it a static IP address and I'm not going to set that static IP address on the computer. I actually reserve it in my Mac OS and here if we take a look on OpenSense because this is the current current operating system that I'm running for my router. I click on services, I click on a DNS mask, DNS and DHCP because that handles all of that side. And if I click on leases here, we can see my two and a half gig adapter is on the dot 100 address. That is the beginning of my DHCP address range. And I usually give my Mac, the main computer that I use at home, a dot 100 address. It's just easy for me to remember if I need to SSH in from anywhere like that, or if I need to access it via a remote desktop system such as Rust Desk, which we're gonna get onto shortly. Now, one thing I don't recommend you do is set the address on the device statically. You're better off reserving it on your router. Now, once my IP address has been reserved, the next thing I do is install Homebrew. Homebrew is absolutely brilliant at managing applications. It's honestly amazing at what it does, and it just makes managing my application so much easier. And Homebrew is essentially a package manager, so the way you would use something like sudo apt install on Ubuntu, for example, or you would use Winget on Windows, Homebrew is essentially the same. We just type in brew, install, and the application. So if I now copy this command here from the homepage, and then I open my terminal and I paste it in, and essentially it will go ahead and install Homebrew for me. I've already gone ahead and done that, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to install it. Now, as soon as Homebrew is installed, I install Tailscale because Tailscale is absolutely brilliant and it allows me to create my own VPN. It's a mesh VPN without a centralized server. If you want me to do a dedicated video, please let me know. But essentially, I have a Tailscale network set up at home as well as at my dad's, and then I can remote into his devices and do any kind of troubleshooting that I need to do. And to install it, I tend to install it by a uh, brew straight away. So I type in brew, search tail scale like so, and it will go ahead and search for it. And there we go, it's found it. So now I can type in brew, install cask tail scale app. So I'm gonna install the app and there we go. Tail scale has now installed. So I can now double click it. It'll ask me to get started. It'll ask me to install all the kind of bits that it needs. And now all I need to do is sign into my tail net and that's essentially it. And there we go, it's now asking me to connect. And the only thing I need to do, and if you've watched my previous videos about tail scale is I have configured it. so that I need to approve every single device and that way it stops a rogue devices from joining. And there we go, if we take a look in the address bar, I am now on my Telnet here and we can see the internal IP address of this Mac mini. So if I'm anywhere outside of my home network and I can download Rust Desk, set up Telscale really quickly and then remote into my device. Absolutely love Telscale for that reason. There are obviously many more things with Telscale, so if you want me to do a full video, please let me know. I'm more than happy to go through it in detail. And if you are thinking of leaving a comment, also don't forget to drop me a like and a follow if you're enjoying these types of videos. Now with Telscale out of the way, the next thing I need to configure is some kind of a remote access system. And I usually like to use Rust Desk, which I'm gonna install shortly, but I'm also experimenting around with screens at this moment in time. It's a VNC client, so it's a little bit different to Rust Desk. Now, screens is macOS only, so that might be a bit of a limitation. Whereas if I use Rust Desk, it's across all the platforms, so like Windows, macOS, and Linux, and it is open source. And again, to install it, I launch my terminal and I type in brew search Rust Desk. And you might be thinking, hold on, how do you remote into another PC? And this is the beauty about Tailscale is I can remote into any PC on my Tailnet. So at my dad's, he's got it installed and I literally just copied the Tailnet IP, pasted in here and I'm off and I can remote into his PC. This is absolutely brilliant. And the thing is, it's got so many amazing features 
that honestly, if you want me to do a video about it, more than happy to go in depth. Now, another app I like to use to remote into other PCs is this one here. It's called the Windows app. And essentially it's a remote desktop application to allow me to remote into Windows PCs. And I have a Windows server running here on one of my PCs here, and it just makes it a little bit easier to remote in. I don't have to use Rust Desk. I can use the official Windows application. It's absolutely brilliant. It's completely free. You can download it on the App Store. And that's just another thing I tend to use as opposed to wrap Rust Desk when it comes to Windows specific devices. So now that we've configured the basics, I wanna show you how I use my NAS to actually back up this system. And I normally use Time Machine to back up Mac OS. It is pretty straightforward, it's super simple, but I set it to back up on my remote server. Well, my server that sits under my desk. I like to call it my remote server, but it's essentially a instance of Synology NAS running in a VM and that backs everything up. But then what I've also got configured on my Synology NAS is, is I have it backed up everything to the Google Drive that I have. I've got two terabytes of space on my Google Drive and I've got a gigabit connection both ways. So the backup is relatively fast. So first it backs up to my Synology NAS and then it backs up to my cloud. So this is what my Synology NAS looks like. There's nothing crazy on it. I've got installed Telscale on it. And then I've also got some backups installed on here that are constantly being sent over to my Google Drive. But in order to set up my time machine, I have to open the application and there we go. We're now gonna add the backup and it's already found the external drive. So I'm gonna set this as a backup disk. I'm just gonna connect it. I do not need to encrypt it, but I'm gonna set a limit because I don't need it to store everything on my my Synology NAS and waste space. I'm going to restrict it to about 200 gig. And this is the beauty of it. So it's now going to automatically back it up every hour. And this is now going down into my little PC that I've got under my desk. It's been backed up. And then, as I said, sent to the cloud. Very simple, but this is how I like to utilize my home setup. Now with all that out of the way, the next thing I tend to focus on is productivity. And one of the things I absolutely love is an application called Raycast. It is honestly something I cannot go without on my Mac. It is so, so good. It has incredible extensions. It has incredible features and everything can be done just with your keyboard. So I first install a Raycast obviously via Homebrew. Now, whilst this is installing, one of the things I tend to change is I tend to change the default shortcuts for Spotlight because they're normally on there and I don't need them. So I click into keyboards, click into keyboard shortcuts, and then I go all the way to the bottom where it says Spotlight and I turn it off because normally it's command space to enable Spotlight, but I don't need it. I don't use it because I just love Raycast that much. And while I'm in here, I also turn off all my screenshot features here because I use an app called CleanShot because in my opinion, it's just that much better. It has annotation. It has so much more than kind of the basic screenshot app that Mac OS comes with. And here we can already see the things that it has configured. It allows me to search my clipboard history. It allows me to create text snippets that I can reuse. It allows me to be my calculator, emoji picker, it has so, so many things as well as obviously be an app launcher. Now here I want to record the hotkey, which is command space because that launches it straight away. I want it to open that login and I want to use the emoji picker because why not? So if I now go into the preferences, first thing I tend to do is have bigger text size because my eyes are getting on a bit. And here is what I find so amazing about Raycast is the extensions. And for example, here you have built-in window management. So you can see all the custom configurations here that you can have for window management. So if I want it to be in the center for first, I do shift command C. So if I now have my terminal open here, I press shift command C and it puts it into the center two thirds of my screen. I absolutely love this. I also have it configured to be on the left hand side. So if I do left half for me, it's shift command left arrow. And then for the right hand side, I tend to do shift command right and then to maximize it it is shift command enter for me so if i now go into my terminal and i press shift command enter it just puts it into the full screen mode and i absolutely love this and as i said there are so so much more i can have custom application shortcuts now for finder i tend to set command e because it is very similar to windows where you do windows e to open the file explorer and then i can always add extra things where i can install extra applications now i don't want to bore you with all these settings here but i will be going through this and installing so many extra things and one of the ones i like to install is homebrew and if i install homebrew i can install applications from raycast i don't have to open my terminal which we're going to get onto shortly i can literally just open my raycast here and there we go we've got all the homebrew commands so i can type in brew search and here, I don't know what I want it to install, for example, setup or something like that. And there it is. And I can literally go ahead and install setup that way. The one application I cannot live without, and as nice as the terminal is, 
if we do search and I type in Alacrity, Alacrity to me is my favorite terminal emulator. It is fast, it is super configurable, and I've already got my dot files ready for it, and this is what I wanna show you now. So now that Alacrity is installed, I'm gonna launch Alacrity here. Alacrity at this moment in time looks absolutely ugly. Nothing's configured, nothing's nice. So let me show you how we're gonna change that. And I will have a link to my dot files down below if you are interested. So, so I've already got my dot files open here and you can download them by all means. We're gonna go back to Alacrity and we're gonna type in git clone and then I'll paste that in. It'll clone it into my dot files. And then I CD into my dot files. Then I go into my config. And here we have Alacrity. And here I'm going to copy my Alacrity folder to my home folder and .config like so. There we go. It's now copied everything across to Alacrity. Now, one of the things that I've just realized here because I couldn't launch Alacrity is I need to install a particular terminal and I use Fish and I also like New Shell, but my Alacrity launches with Fish. So I need to go ahead and install them. And again, homebrew to the rescue, brew, install fish, new shell and ZSH, and it's gone ahead and installed everything for me automatically. If you want me to do a deep dive into how to erase your terminal, because essentially that's what that's called, uh, please let me know, because I'm more than happy to make a full video about it. Because as you can see, I have Atwin, I have Bat, I have Fish, I have Hyper, I have Kitty, I have Neovim, I have so, so many configurations in here, and I want to just go and do a deep dive on it. So if that's what you want to see, let me know. And also don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this. Now it's now time to rice my NeoVim and essentially what that means is installing a super cool NeoVim setup here and this is the one I use which is called LazyVim. And the installation is as simple as copying this across like so into my home directory and I'm cloning it and then I just follow the steps and I need to remove this like so. And now I type in NVIM. So this is what it looks like now and it is just so much nicer. You can see here all the color combos and so on. You can see everything that's kind of commented out. It just looks absolutely incredible. I absolutely love, love, love NeoVim, especially with LazyVim. So if you want me to do more of a deep dive, again, please let me know. Now the final thing I tend to install, and this might be a little bit controversial, is something called Setup. And Setup is a subscription base and I know everything has subscriptions these days, so I completely get it if you you've switched off at this point. But to me, this is one of my favorite apps because it's a monthly cost of I think about $10 or 10 pounds depending on where you are, but it has so many super cool paid apps inside. So essentially the point is that you pay this monthly and then all the apps that tend to cost five, 10, $15 tend to be bundled into this and then you can download them and use them. And there are about five or six that I use on a daily basis and I absolutely love it. There we go, I've got membership that's active. And if we now take a look at clean shot there, and I wanna show you this because it integrates again with Raycast. So if I open this here, there we go. It's now allowing me to integrate it. So I'm installing the extension. Extensions has been installed. So if we take a look at CleanShot now, here is where I can configure everything that I need. And I know CleanShot offers this as well, but it's just so much better to have one place where I manage everything. So if I want to record my screen, I can do Shift Command R and that will just start recording my screen. If I want to do capture full screen, I essentially match what Apple does, which is shift command three. And if I want to capture an area, I can do shift command four and it will go ahead and kind of do the area screenshot that I need. Launch and allow, there we go. And I can just go ahead and say, take a screenshot like this and I can open the editor. And this is what I love about it, where I can, for example, blur stuff if I don't need to show you that. So if there's certain IP addresses that I'm trying to hide, this is how easy it is for me to blur. I can obviously draw arrows here. I can do many things like show you the steps that you need to do to click through and I know this sounds very simple but it's just so nice to have everything in one and this is why I absolutely love using something like CleanShot. I can do backgrounds on it so I can for example expand it, close it and so on. I can do shadows, drop shadows, corners, I can round them off to really give you that aesthetic look and it's a super simple app and this is why I like paying for setup. So if I go back into setup here, it gives you your explorer, it shows you your apps that you have installed like Clean My Mac is another one that I've used a lot which is very very good. There is also Bartender which just allows me to hide all the applications in the top of my status bar but I'm not that bothered because I don't have that much on there and as I said there are many more features that I use and I actually can't remember so I'm gonna have to spend some time going through this again and configuring it the way I want it but I hope that's given you a bit of an insight as to how I configure my Mac and I hope you've been able to take away some of those things from what I've just talked about I will leave all the links down in the description below if you are interested in finding out more for yourself they are not sponsored I'd love to be sponsored by someone like Tailscale or Setup because genuinely I use those apps every single day and the fact that Tailscale is free and the features it offers honestly just blows my mind 
I absolutely love it. But as I said, if there's anything that you've learned, drop me a like, drop me a comment as well, what you are going to be using yourself. And also don't forget to subscribe because I'm planning on doing more videos like this. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this one and I'll catch you in the next one.